Hey guys, what's up? This is Don and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. And today I'm going to be showing you how to create a very simple but very effective light setup for your 3D logos or 3D text that you may want to use um, or you may want to place against some kind of wall or surface. Um, please excuse my voice right now. I have a cold and uh, it's been really stubborn. It won't go away. But uh, these tutorials have to go out and, uh, you know, it ain't going to stop me. So let's uh, take a look at how to create this light setup. This uh, type which you're looking at right now is from uh, one of our other tutorials called How to Create a Chiseled Text uh, Effect. So if you haven't seen it, you can um, uh, probably look forward to it because it's a pretty awesome tutorial. But uh, anyway. Let's um, set up the lighting. I'm just going to remove all of it for now. So this is what we have by default. Let me get a light. And uh, I'm going to go to the array icon and get array and drop the light into the array. And uh, this is what we have. What the array does is basically make clones and uh, put them in a circular shape. So if I set the number of copies to 9, I actually end up with 10 lights because it doesn't count the first one. Anyway, this is uh, way too bright. So if we go to the light, let's change the intensity to 10. And let's increase the radius of the array to maybe 600. Uh, as long as it's enough to cover your entire logo or text you'll be fine and I want to change the pitch rotation to 90 degrees so I have this okay and then from here what I can do is duplicate the array and just bring this out to about here and lower the radius a touch and then do the same again just duplicate bring this out and lower the radius so if I uh, zero out my camera to return to just the front maybe move it up and I hit render you can see we still don't have anything that uh, interesting yet I'm gonna go to the lights and add a shadow maps soft so now we have some nice shadows in between the letters and this is kind of like a fake ambient occlusion effect only it's a lot faster and I'm also going to increase the contrast of uh, this light to maybe 50 percent and I think that just helps to separate the highlights from the shadows anyway let's uh, carry on we are going to get um, uh, another light. Let's bring this one out here. Just uh, past the third set of uh, lights. And let's set the type to spot. Let's really increase the width. Let's go to details and add a, a fall off. So a linear fall off. And let's uh, put that there. I think maybe an inverse square fall off might be better inverse square clamped okay that looks pretty good to me and I'm going to reduce the intensity to 35 and increase the contrast to to 50 and uh, that just adds a um, uh, like an ambient lighting so everything is uh, just generally uh, brighter and uh, the center is brighter than the outside so it brings more attention to um, the middle of the frame anyway we're gonna get one more light and let's move this one out slightly move it up and move it to the right so it's gonna be beaming down from up here Let's uh, go to the general settings and add an area shadow. So now when I render, 
I have this really cool shadow down here. I think I want to maybe lengthen that shadow. So just move this closer to the back wall. I'm just going to push it to the left a little. So the shadow is going to be much, much larger. I'm also going to brighten this light up to maybe 125 and increase the contrast to maybe 35 and then hit render again. And uh, there we have it. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't take long to set this up and um, with this particular uh, type that I have, this uh, chiseled text, uh, it does a good job of catching the highlights in some really nice places and it really creates some good form and shape. And uh, just in general, I think uh, this setup um, works as a very good uh, balanced composition because you have some dark uh, on this side and then it's lighter on the left side and the thing that just balances out and then we have the logo in the middle. So anyway, I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.